Hey, all my Libra friends, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Terry Hunter. I'm an intuitive astrologer, and I'm here today with your September 2024 monthly horoscopes. These horoscopes are based on whole sign Western astrology. So when I'm talking about Libra, I'm referring to Libra rising as the first house and dictating the landscape of the chart. This is also applicable to Libra sun and moon. And if you have three or more personal planets in the sign of Libra, uh, this is applicable to you as well. When I refer to a day and a time, it's based on the Pacific time zone. So please adjust for your location. Uh, the month starts with Uranus going retrograde. Uranus has been transiting your eighth house of transformation, of death and rebirth, of other people's money, inheritances, taxes, stockbrokers, financial dynamics uh, in the respect of the exchange of money through investments, the stock exchange. Um, it also rules sex and the occult, and it rules that deep psychological imprint where we make our decisions and we're not even aware that we're doing so. It's, it's so deeply ingrained in us. It's also, we layer onto that eighth house, the Taurus energy of family history, of a sense of dependability, something that I can sort of think is predictable. Taurus rules the voice. It rules the uh, your sense of self-worth as it was shaped by your family dynamic growing up. It rules your skills. It rules food, the culinary arts, a sense of comfort and peace and agriculture and growing. Um, this is all really relevant because to you, as far as the eighth house goes, because there's a transformation going on where there's a 2.0 version of you that's being birthed. And this retrograde is going to bring into focus uh, some of the areas where you want to move forward. Uranus rules your hopes and your dreams. It rules uh, innovation in the form of technology, space, science, uh, things where, where they are unprecedented because the, the humanity is not used to them. It's kind of akin to the, the 90s where you know suddenly cell phones took over and we were all using them. Uranus rules those kind of changes to the masses. It also rules um, the cosmic consciousness and it rules things that develop over time. It rules lightning and electricity and the genius mind. It also rules upheaval and uh, overthrowing what has been in order to break through for what can be new. And oftentimes that's considered very rebellious and um, irrevocable in some respects. So we see here there is an opposition to Mercury in Leo. Leo is ruling your 11th house and that's what Uranus naturally rules. So we're seeing here, there's an opportunity to really delineate between what you are thinking is possible and what really could be possible when you step out into the future and focus on that. It's This is a tense aspect. At this time, the moon is conjunct Mercury and Mercury's just come out of a retrograde. So there's been a lot of reflection, a lot of um, re-evaluation about things that I want for my future. Because as Mercury moves into your 12th house, it is going to uh, bring forth sort of the soul's historic characteristics and traits, the things it has historically believed and acted upon will come back into play. And Mercury is very powerful in Virgo because it is not only the ruler, but it is also exalted there. But we're going to talk about that a little bit more in a minute. So we see that Uranus in your eighth house is making a favorable aspect to Pluto in Aquarius. And Aquarius is your um, fifth house. It is the house where you experience romance and you experience your individual pleasures and um, entertainment, joy, fun, laughter. It is a house where uh, it's a house where you put yourself out on, on the stage. Now, interestingly enough, 
having it be Aquarius, we're seeing the similar themes as this um, Uranus in Taurus. So this is a favorable aspect to your transformation. But before that full transformation can take place, we're going to revisit as Pluto re-enters Capricorn, which is your fourth house, some dynamics from how you were brought up, your roots, your country, and your, your uh, traditions of origin. We also see that Uranus is making a favorable aspect to Neptune. This will go on. These conversations between these outer planets are going to go on for um, quite some time. The Uranus will be in the conversation for the next four or five years. And then uh, Pluto and Neptune will continue their, their sextile conversation for over the next decade. So that's very powerful because there are things happening on the world stage that are going to change the way that we operate. And we are going through a tense time of reevaluating, you know, the way we think and how we have operated and if it really works for us. And at the same time on this day later, I'm going to go to 11 PM. We will see that Pluto has moved back into Capricorn. Pluto will not be in Capricorn again for another 84 years. It will stay in Capricorn until um, November 19th when it will uh, re-enter Aquarius and stay in Aquarius until March 2043. So, so many things will shift for you, Libra, in the way that you view yourself view your ex personal expression. The fifth house is extremely a personal house. It's a house where you put your talents and your skills and your voice on the stage. And you start to experience other people's um, response to that. Now I'm going to move on to the second where we have a new moon in Virgo. This is going to happen at 6.55 p.m. And a new moon is where we plant the seeds for a new manifestation, for a new experience, for a new dynamic in our life. And I think that this is a powerful new moon because it being at the 11th degree, it represents that master number of thought. And we see here that while not in conversation with the new moon, we have Neptune at 29 degrees, which reduces down to an 11. And we see Pluto at 29 degrees, which reduces down to an 11. So there is an opportunity at this time to plant the seeds for something that's much more palatable to that which you want to experience. I clicked on Saturn because Saturn is making its opposition to this new moon. And Pisces is your sixth house of work. It's also the house of our daily routines where we, um, you know, what you do when you get up in the morning and how you process your day. It is your health. It is your mental health in that form of stress and anxiety, not like breakdown anxiety, but, you know, the pressure and feeling the the having to get things done. So I think that, oh, I'm going to click over here onto the moon and the sun, that this Saturn opposition is really giving you an opportunity to assess and look at what's important to you. The sign of Pisces is extremely compassionate. It's extremely uh, loving and extremely creative and very sensitive, uh, both emotionally and mentally. And often, it represents uh, isolation and being alone because the harshness of the everyday life can be more than it can take sometimes. So what Saturn's offering Libra as it's looking at your 12th house and your sixth house access is balance and uh, building a strong structure and taking the time to connect with your inner voice, your inner uh, dialogue, your your um, heavenly team. If you think about it, Aries naturally rules the first house. So when Libra rules the first house, we've turned the wheel upside down and everything is quote unquote backwards. So normally where this Pisces would be the 12th house and Virgo would be the sixth house, you have an opportunity through quiet time, through reflection, through putting spiritual practices into your daily routine and creating structure, even though it may feel counterintuitive because it may feel a little bit like, you know, the thing about Pisces is sometimes it's so compassionate that it, it actually, um, 
erodes itself. And Saturn is so obligatory that it erodes itself. So I think it's necessary to have this balance of the mind and, and the heart or the emotion or the intuition. And this is how you can do that is sort of feeling this moment of opposition. My daily routine is getting in my way. I've got obligations, things to do. I don't have time to sit back and do these spiritual practices. So let me offer you this Libra. When you take a shower in the morning, that can be your time to connect with spirit. That can be your time to set intentions, show gratitude, uh, you know, do your, your validation list, whatever it is your routine is. And that way you can incorporate it and still get the things you have to do done. Uh, we are the next moon we experience is an eclipse. So we're, this is kind of a, a powerful intention setting time. We go um, to the fourth. I'm going to move this back to 12 o'clock. And on the fourth, we see Mars enter Cancer. Ah, not quite yet. Let me go a little later in the day. Let's try 4 p.m. Get it good on in there. Okay, so Mars has now entered Cancer. And this is significant because Cancer is in its, um, I'm sorry, Mars is in its fall in Cancer. It is in the opposite sign of its exaltation. It's a place where it doesn't necessarily feel respected. It doesn't feel heard, listened to, and even taken seriously. And sometimes feeling ignored. Cancer is your 10th house. So this is a very visible house of your public reputation and career. We see the cancer energy is the maternal energy, the nurturing energy historically on this planet. Uh, the role of mother has been sort of wobbly in its admiration from from the masses. You know, when people, mothers who work at home, they say, I don't work. And that's kind of a shame. But anyway, I say this because Mars, when it goes into this house, will initially feel uh, honestly like jumping into cold water. But as the month moves on, Mars is going to get some steam going. When you take fire and water, it creates steam and it can blow the gasket off of the pot or it can uh, move the locomotion or the locomotive forward, the steam engine forward. Now, when we look at this initial feeling, there's this feeling of a blind side. That's what I call a quincunx. It's this weird feeling I have where I can't see if there's an issue, I can't see a potential challenge and I can feel something in the underbelly and I don't know what to do about it. This is, this is all over the place with the square here to Neptune and at this time the square to the moon and this deep psychological imprint. So I feel like the winds of change within your home, within your home environment, some old structures are going to be rewritten. And on some level, I think it's important for you to stay in that intuitive trusting body and recognizing that if you don't put the mask on yourself, you cannot save anyone else. And again, trusting a bigger picture, a div divinity within the situation could be very powerful for you because sometimes uh, disruptions feel a little senseless. Now let's move to, on, where am I going? I'm moving to the 17th now, oh, no, the 9th, I'm sorry. Let me click off of Mars. On the 9th, we will see that Mercury has re-entered Virgo. Now, the, I, I started to speak of this earlier, this is the third time that Mercury is the apex of a transit yod between this deep psychological imprint of how I was raised, my roots, the feelings of being maybe even isolated or not feeling um, that warm, cozy, a lot of obligation and duty. There's some real challenging dynamics when Capricorn is your fourth house. And then we see here that Neptune is just on the um, brink of your or the cusp of your fit, um, sixth and seventh house, which I think is important because this is where you come into some sort of service through and, and enhance through your spiritual dynamics an awareness of the apparatus that is the monkey mind. 
Mercury in Virgo is very powerful because it's exalted and the ruler. And this is your 12th house. So there are going to be a lot of revisiting of things potentially from your childhood. Capricorn rules history. Mercury rules rules your childhood experience and, and Virgo rules service and health. And then we see that there's a, still a square here to, um, to Uranus and a square to the moon at this time. So the, the, the monkey mind versus the genius mind, will I be brave in, in nurturing myself and taking care of myself that, so that I can truly be there for others? It, it's, a, it's a challenging dynamic. And in its third transit over this apex, I'm assuming there's going to be a, an epiphany of some kind, a conclusion drawn. Um, I think that that new moon, and we're going to see in a few days, a, a partial lunar eclipse, which is going to bring us a culmination. So this may be where the thoughts, the ideas start to come into play. Now let's go to the 17th and look at this partial lunar eclipse. This is happening in Pisces which is your fifth house. It's happening at 7.34 p.m. And I'm sorry, that was your sixth house, Pisces, is your sixth house. No. Yes, Pisces is your sixth house. I'm sorry, I got myself confused for a minute. Um, I want to offer this because this is really a powerful um, full moon and partial eclipse because here we see that Neptune and the moon are conjunct. This feels like it could be twofold. It could be where you literally feel like you are communing with your guides, your angels, your deceased loved ones, and the connection feels so strong and powerful that it brings an illumination of some kind. It brings a culmination of some kind. It is favored by Uranus and favored by Pluto, which are also in it. This is now a grand trine towards the sun. So somehow this sun is going to illuminate something as it reflects onto the moon through a spiritual dynamic. I think the fog will be lifted. We have a lot of, uh, again, this sort of energy of of uh, being aware of the mind and how it works and how it is sort of an apparatus that runs on its own. And then we infuse intentional thought into that. We often think that everything we that goes on in our brains is an intentional thought, but I, I definitely don't think that. I think if we're lucky, we're infusing 20% of the time intentional thought. So this is really powerful. Now, another aspect going on at the time of this uh, eclipse is Venus. Venus is making a quincunx to the moon and Venus and in Pisces energy are very good friends, but here she can't quite see what's going on. She can't quite grab onto it with her five senses. And what I want to point out is that at this time, she's literally on the fixed star speaker, which is the voice of angels. And I think that that's further reflected by her trine in Gemini to your ninth house. I'm sorry, your ninth house of Gemini with Jupiter here, offering you expansion and further connection. It may illuminate an old wound. This is your sixth house of service to others. Um, I'm sorry, your seventh house of service to partnership and others, both professional and intimate. And then of course, the square here to Pluto. Pluto has been in conversation this whole time in the background, kind of bringing up that underbelly so that it can be transformed from toxic waste into something that makes your garden grow. And I think that this is a real time to connect with your guides and your angels and ask to receive guidance. And as you can sit in sort of outside of your, your brain activity, and allow this full moon to bring this illumination. I think it could be very powerful. We also see an opposition at this time in your 12th house from Mercury to Saturn. So this could further indicate that, you know, you're feeling this, this tension outside of yourself from obligation, duty, responsibility, an elder who literally says, it's time, you know, you need to take care of me. I'm not, I can't, I'm not capable. And, and there's a real, tension here with Pluto. Mercury in Virgo is going to be so connected to its service. It's going to be so connected to, it's like the Boy Scout, you know, I got to get another badge. I got to get another badge. And this could really be on some level being a disservice. 
So this this square and a half, I think of the square as the as the box you know that you're in, but the half square is again this sort of back door that I'm not aware of what's in there. And Pluto represents that psychology. The 29th degree in Capricorn is fears and depression in my mind. We even see 46 right here. Minutes is reducing down to a 10. And even Mercury's got a 46 degree, I'm sorry, 46 minutes in this 14 degrees. So there's a lot that's inferring to be aware of the number one in your life, what you are manifesting, your thoughts are manifesting very quickly. So this is a super powerful lunar eclipse and the first of two. Um, we also see at the time of the eclipse that in your 10th house, Mars is being squared by the nodes. So the south node's been going through your first house, really sort of wanting to remove anything that doesn't allow for an authentic expression of yourself within partnership. The south node is headed towards a point called the super galactic center. And uh, it's really a powerful point where the relationship you have with yourself is the measure and the indicator of the health of the relationships you have with others. And yet the sign of of Libra is not used to that. It's used to acquiescing to the relationship, to giving up its power. And the solution to that is its individuality, stretching yourself to be yourself. So there could be a real fight between that because this, this Mars feeling disrespected and not listened to up in the 10th house could be triggered at this time as well. But if it is triggered, then it's an opportunity to transform. Again, we've got some beautiful aspects from Uranus to Jupiter to this, um, the moon and Neptune here. We also see Uranus making a great aspect to the sun. This is all in your eighth house, Uranus. So you could actually reconcile something from a long time ago that, that has been haunting you and maybe keeping you in a pattern of some kind. Let's go now to the 22nd. The sun will enter Libra. And um, we see that, well, I'm going to go a little later in the day because uh, Venus should be entering Scorpio. Let me try 6 p.m. Nope. Almost there. I'll go 8 p.m. There we go. Um, this is pretty powerful because the sun is in fall in Libra, which is again, this feeling of not necessarily being listened to or respected. And that's because the sun is our ego, our drive and ambition. And it's in this house of cooperation in my partnerships. But the South Node has been calling you Libra to allow your individuality, your expression, your, your creativity to flow, to serve your relationships. And that's what this tension of the South Node is through your first house. We also see that Venus is here, uh, zero degrees Scorpio, where she's gone into her um, detriment. And that's where you feel a little wobbly. You don't feel powerful. You feel a little out of control. There's a sense of feeling uncomfortable. Uh, there's no ease. And that's further supported by the square to Pluto. But one of the things is she's heading towards the Shapley attractor. The Shapley attractor is a point within the Shapley cluster that illuminates where we have false attachments to things where we have a not aligned to something uh, that it reflects our deeper truth, but rather plays to our fears. And we can see here that Venus is a square and a half to Saturn, our fears, those un, un, the fears I know and the fears I don't know. I can't see my power and my divinity and the underbelly is getting me. So this is a challenging dynamic at this point. I'm sorry, I, I goofed. Let me click over here because Venus not only rules your self-worth, your beauty, your partnerships, it rules your money and it's going into the sign uh, that rules other people's money, power and control, finances, banking, stocks, um, all sorts of things. So there could be a real, um, this is also your second house. So there could be an opportunity that when you step into using your voice and using your skills, mm -hmm. even if you it's tense in the beginning, you could find yourself starting to benefit from that. But it starts off in a challenging way. And I think that's also emphasized by the continued square of uh, Mars to the nodes. Okay, let's go. 
But on the 24th, I'll go quickly to the 24th. She will actually, Venus will actually be conjunct the Shapley uh, attractor. There's a five to 12 degree orb with this. So if you have any personal planets within five to 12 degrees of two degrees of Scorpio, you have, uh, you have a soul's intention at this point in time to address false attachments. We also see that, um, that the sun is on the um, galactic, super galactic center exact. And that is again, illuminating the relationship with self in order to have truly healthy relationships with others. And now we have the moon coming into this T-square. It's exact to the nodes at this time, creating a bit of awareness about whatever frustrations I might have, whatever uh, feelings of um, not listening to my gut for some reason, I want to put it that way, or standing in a place to represent healing and balancing and intuitive knowledge there, there's something offered, you're being offered something to represent through your own experiences. It's almost as if you walk through a fire and those watching you walk through the fire are inspired by you. I know, I don't know what that means. That's just how spirit put it in my head. And I just stick with what they tell me. Let's go to the 26th where Mercury has now entered Libra. Mercury becomes quite a sweet talker here, really good with words, good with sales here and creating relationships. But both the sun and Mercury are now conjunct the super galactic center. And my mind is really thinking about how I, what I want for myself. Is it possible? I know I have to be egoless to the opinions of others while not being harsh or brash or rude, sometimes it's best to let people experience your evolution than versus telling them about your evolution. Okay, and then let's just go to the last day of the month. And the last day of the month is pretty, um, it's not too, too cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. Uh, we see mostly blue lines here. The nodes will always be in opposition. Oh, why didn't the node... How funny that the the, uh, the south node did not come in opposition to the north node. Well, there we go. That's weird. I don't know why that's not showing up. It is showing up this, that the sun and the moon are in. I'm sorry. The sun and Mercury are conjunct at eight degrees of Libra. This for me is that eighth degree is your eighth house. That scorpionic, that, that pl plutonian energy and that thoughts and this coming together could be a real epiphany it could also be a bit of feeling challenged because your mind is being over shadowed by how people have previously seen you and the south node is going to continue to go backwards and will eventually move to that two degrees of libra in your first house which i think is going to be very powerful for an awareness of how important the relationship with yourself is in order to maintain a healthy relationship with anybody, business partners, work partners, whenever anybody's too self-deprecating, it borders on martyrdom and that's not, not good for anyone. We see that the month also ends with a t uh, grand trine. It's not a tight trine because Venus is at nine degrees but she'll tighten up as we get into October and the focal point being Mars here, which is your 10th house, meaning Mars is transiting your 10th house of cap, uh, um, cancer. And it is in a trine to your fifth house of Pisces. So there's a real opportunity through your spiritual practices, through your creativity, you will find a sense of self that feels a little less vulnerable to the influences and power and money of others, but rather, again, Scorpio is your second house. So this is a, you know, the overlay of your own skills and Venus naturally rules the second house and there your bravery can really pay off, but it might be a bit of a struggle because here you have this, you know, you could have some trepidation. Now I want to offer this Everything that we endeavor creatively does not have to be about putting it on a world stage for other people's critique. It could be just about the process of creation and the enjoyment of that process. 
So I hope that that resonates with you because I think that is the main point here is the relationship with self then nurtures the experience outside of the self. All right. Well, my Libras, that's it for September 2024. We are headed towards some really uh, roller coaster days with the stars and with the earth as it transforms into a more open space, both mentally, emotionally, physically, and spiritually. So I will be back next month, uh, October. Again, my name is Terry Hunter. I'm an intuitive astrologer. If you'd like to book a reading with me, my information is below in the description and I am available. I look forward to seeing you all next time. Bye.